Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere And each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW group void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast. Hour one. Well, this was almost an interesting start to the show. <laughs> Welcome, it's Eric Erickson here. It is my show. The phone number is 877-973-7425. I'm, I'm in studio today. I'm, I'm sitting here uh, next to Andrew right of the board, and I'm reading something. I'm talking to him, and the music is in the background, and it doesn't dawn on me like, oh, the show has started. I got to push the microphone button. I am a professional. There are just some days you wouldn't know it. Like today, apparently, I'm not an employee. <laughs> I've, I, I, so my company makes you redo your password every several months, and I got the messages and ignored it. So I called them today to reset the password. They're like, well, your account's disabled. Well, why is it disabled? Well, the, you're not an employee. <laughs> like, I'm in the building. It was resolved. Nobody panic. Now, all right, we, we, we got we to gotta start with... Well, I, I, I need to talk to the, the Democrats who hate listen for a moment. We'll get to Merrick Garland. Uh, I am I'm, I'm still I'm trying to let his testimony play out a little bit before I get to it. So we'll get to Merrick Garland here in a little while. Uh, he, he, but um, but there's a problem for you Democrats out there and, and you need to take this to heart. I don't know if you are aware of this or not. But Donald Trump is beating Joe Biden in the polling average. He, he is. Six-tenths of a percent today, but, but he is. But there are problems. Now, I, and I'm wondering when Joe Biden becomes a threat to democracy. And I, I say that somewhat flippantly, but l- let me explain this to you. So we know Donald Trump is a threat to democracy. Democrats tell us this all the time. Donald Trump, threat to democracy, threat to democracy. You got to vote for the Democrats. If you vote for the Republicans, threat to democracy, that's bad. Well, you know, Jill Stein, who ran in 2016, and Democrats blame her along with the Russians and, and uh, what's his name from the FBI, Comey, for causing Hillary Clinton to lose. Jill Stein, threat to democracy. She was a Russian sleeper cell, even though she wasn't, but that's what they said, and she's a threat to democracy. Well, now Cornell West is a threat to democracy because he's running as a third party against Joe Biden. And Cornell West running for the Green Party could pull enough young uh, Gen Z and millennial voters away from the Democrats to cost Joe Biden an election. They're worried about Cornell West. They're starting to call him a threat to democracy. James Carville has called him a threat to democracy. A Democratic editorialist called him a threat to democracy. He was called a threat to democracy on, on MSNBC last night. No labels is a threat to democracy. No labels is the third party group trying to find a moderate. It's looking like it could be like a Mitt Romney, Joe Manchin ticket. Those are the rumblings out there right now. And that those could pull people away from Joe Biden. They're at Mitt Romney, now a threat to democracy. Joe Manchin is a threat to democracy. So we got we got threats to democracy all around us. When does Joe Biden become a threat to democracy? Because if it's all about stopping Donald Trump, Joe Biden is a threat to democracy because Joe Biden is not stopping Donald Trump. Now, you should know, and this is the, the what the Democratic apologists will say, is that right now, if you were to go back to 2011, Mitt Romney was ahead of Barack Obama. Mitt Romney was leading in the polls, just like right now Donald Trump is leading in the polls. Mitt Romney was further ahead of Obama in 2011 than Donald Trump is ahead of Joe Biden right now. But can you be safe, Democrats? Are you sure about this? Do you want to take the chance? Because the underlying fundamental data out there is deeply problematic. This is YouGov, Yahoo News YouGov, which now has the race tied. 
In last month's Yahoo News YouGov poll, President Biden led former President Donald Trump by a solid margin, 47-41, in a hypothetical Election Day matchup. Before that, Biden led Trump in every Yahoo News YouGov poll since February in 10 of the 11 Yahoo News YouGov polls conducted this year. But over the last few weeks of summer, Biden's consistent advantage has evaporated amid growing concerns about his age and fitness for another term, as well as a long-shot impeachment push by House Republicans. Meanwhile, Trump appears to be gaining momentum despite the 91 criminal charges lodged against him since the start of 2023. They are now tied in the Yahoo News YouGov poll. The CBS News poll has Trump ahead of Biden. The Reuters polling is raising all sorts of red flags for Joe Biden. The opinion poll found Democrat Biden 80 tied with Trump, both receiving 39% of the vote. 39% is also Joe Biden's approval rating. Trump's approval rating is also 39 to 40%, depending on which poll you look at. And, and voters are siding with Trump right now over Biden because they think Biden sucks on the economy and that his age is a thing. Speaking of his age, Perry Bacon is a columnist at the Washington Post. Perry Bacon was a reporter for the Washington Post. He was always a progressive reporter. Now he is, a, surprisingly, unsurprisingly, a progressive columnist. This is his spin on why you should not worry about Joe Biden's age. See if you buy this. I'm not going to spend the next 13 months pretending I'm confident that an 86-year-old Joe Biden's age in November 2028 would be up to being president of the United States. You shouldn't either. either. The answer to questions about Biden's age is simple. Yes, there's a chance President Vice President Kamala Harris becomes president, and that would be fine. Is that hard to say? Apparently, during separate interviews on CNN last week, Nancy Pelosi and Jamie Raskin, two normally very confident speakers, seemed to dodge, saying directly, Harris is a strong running mate for Biden. This is, this is the defense. A few months ago, my colleague Matt Bai called for Biden himself to be direct about the prospect of a Harris presidency. I'd make her a constant fixture at Biden's side in public events and in the kind of extended interview she mostly avoids doing. I'd turn the campaign into what Hollywood called a two-hander, a show with two protagonists. I respect Matt Bai's view, but I'm not sure that casting Harris as essentially a co-president is the right approach. Instead, no matter what Biden and Democratic Party officials say, 81 million or so of us regular citizens citizens who voted for him should be up front about Biden's age. A President Harris would be much better than a President Trump. Um, that's not what the voters say. Naval Lint is more popular with Americans than Kamala Harris. Bestiality with amoebas is more popular with Americans than Kamala Harris. The devil is more popular with Americans than Kamala Harris. COVID is more popular with Americans than Kamala Harris. Do you get me? Kamala Harris is the least popular politician in America. I mean, Americans would line up to conceive Mitch McConnell's child sooner than they would line up to have Kamala Harris in the same room with them. That's how unpopular she is. It's not going well for them. They can't do this, and yet they can't get rid of her because it would start an intersectional woke war on the Democratic Party side as Pete Buttigieg, Kamala Harris, and Gavin Newsom battle each other out, survival of the fittest. Maybe maybe we should do this. This could be the latest ABC uh, um, bachelor program is, is have Joe Biden be the bachelor and have all these people woo him. And, and see who survives or put them all on an island. Let's make it Survivor. Let's put them in CBS. Put them on the island Survivor. See who dies. Have it be Lord of the Flies meets the Survivor. Who's going to be Piggy? you got a problem here, Democrats. Joe Biden is losing to Donald Trump. Not only is Joe Biden losing to Donald Trump. You want this? You want you You, you want the rest of the news from the polling? Is this where you say you don't believe the polling? That y- y'all don't believe the polling anymore because suddenly it's going bad for you. So, ah, no, polling's rigged. 
You know what else it shows? You know what the data shows? Because you can go beyond the polls because a lot of people don't believe the polls. We can go beyond the polls. We can go to the actual data based on who's giving money, who's engaged, who's volunteering, who's showing up. Black and Hispanic voters, they're at about 20% support for every Republican out there from Trump to Haley to DeSantis to even Chris Christie and Mike Pence and Tim Scott. Every Republican is getting record high support from non-white voters in large part because of Joe Biden. And these voters, they, they may not be able to bring themselves to go to the polls. They may not be able to actually go in and, and say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to vote for Donald Trump. I'm going to vote for Nikki Haley. I'm going to vote for Ron DeSantis. They may not be able to do that. But if they stay home, it helps the Republicans. The one thing you can be sure of is they're not going to go vote for Joe Biden. Some will come home. But if it's 5%, that's still a 15% vote share for the GOP, and that's enough to win. It doesn't matter who the Republican is. Right now, Joe Biden is losing to them. He's losing to Donald Trump, Republican. Democrats. By the way, the Democrats still want Trump to be the nominee. They still are playing this game. They're trying to shape the Republican field. They're trying to help Donald Trump. So Donald Trump committed a major, major faux pas on the Republican trail this week. In fact, you've now got a coalition of evangelical pastors of prominent churches in South Carolina coming out telling their congregations, you got to go for Ron DeSantis. DeSantis got a massive evangelical coalition in South Carolina to come out for him today. In Iowa, the the major faith leaders in Iowa have now issued a statement together with the governor of the state of Iowa condemning Donald Trump's views on abortion. Donald Trump, com, um, he condemned fetal heartbeat legislation, criticized Ron DeSantis, Brian Kemp, Mike DeWine, Greg Abbott, and others for passing fetal heartbeat legislation, saying it's terrible, terrible legislation, the fetal heartbeat legislation. He came out and said he'd make a compromise on abortion that would make Democrats happy. Uh, the faith leaders have had enough. They've seen enough. They're done. They've started issuing statements. They're building coalitions. In South Carolina, they've come out for Ron DeSantis. In Iowa, they've come out for Ron DeSantis as, as the only guy who can stop him and a pro-life leader. So Joe Biden overnight began attacking Donald Trump for taking credit for the end of Roe v. Wade. So at a moment, Republicans, you should pay attention to this one. At a moment that Donald Trump is having to do damage control because of his statements on abortion, Joe Biden has decided to help him do damage control and attack him for being too pro-life. Right as evangelical leaders are suddenly congealing, consolidating, rallying behind Donald Trump's Republican opponents, Joe Biden comes out and says, Donald Trump's the most pro-life president ever. We can't let this guy back in the White House. Funny how that works, isn't it? Joe Biden and the Democrats spent 2020 trying to shape the GOP field. They worked to get bad Republican candidates nominated, weak Republican candidates nominated, to, to get them in the general so that the Democrats could beat them. And now here they are helping Donald Trump do damage control on the abortion issue, trying to get the right to rally around Donald Trump from the right on abortion. Just as Donald Trump is hurting himself on that issue, Joe Biden lends him a hand trying to shape the Republican primary, trying to ensure Donald Trump is the nominee. Um... Democrats, are you sure that's wise? He's beating you right now. I mean, they're all beating you, but he's really beating you right now. You could be shaping the field to your detriment, but the problem that the Democrats have right now is that it doesn't actually matter. It doesn't matter because every single one of the Republican nominees is beating Joe Biden right now. If the goal is to stop the Republicans from getting back into power because that's a threat to democracy, how much longer before Democrats for themselves decide Joe Biden himself is a threat to democracy?
I run a small business. You may not realize this radio show is small business. I've got employees. I got management headaches, hirings of employees, thankfully no firings. But you got to deal with the management burden sometimes. If you're a small business owner, you probably deal with those headaches as well. And sometimes I've realized it's better to outsource to an HR department so you don't have to be the bad guy. Your employees can like you and you want to deal with an HR department that your employees can like for the most part when they need HR assistance. And you got to think about these things as a small business owner. Let's say somebody isn't showing up when they're supposed to. You don't want to have to be the confrontational bad guy. That's where Bambi comes in. Or an employee reports a serious issue like sexual harassment, and you're not even sure if you got a documented policy. Bambi can take care of those things. With Bambi, you get access to a dedicated HR manager starting at just $99 a month. They're available by phone, by email, real-time chat, so you can do onboardings and terminations that run smoothly. Your team members help coaching for peak performance. Your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations, and they always change. Y'all, Bambi's dedicated HR managers are U.S.-based individuals who are dedicated to your business. So they seem like they're on your team, not just somebody from a different company, but actually on your team with the personal touches you want. So if you need HR assistance for your growing small business, reach out to Bambi, Bambi Bambi.com. Go right now, type in Eric Erickson under podcast. When you sign up, it'll help the show. It's spelled Bambi, B-A-M-B-E-E dot com, Bambi dot com. Type in Eric Erickson under podcast. Start moving your business forward with great, dedicated, team-oriented HR, Bambi dot com. Y'all, I, I, I've got no self-control over this because I've been dying to play this for you, and and I didn't play it out of the gate, but I can't wait because I was going to play it later in the show. I just can't. I can't. You got to hear this. So... <laughs> This is from WBTX TV in Florence, South Carolina. Oh my gosh, I've been waiting to play. So they found a man who heard the F-35 crash. Randolph White retired from his job at the paper mill in Georgetown 10 years ago. He lives in this house with his wife in a very rural area of Williamsburg County. He loves living about two miles away from where he grew up. Normally, it's pretty quiet, but on Sunday afternoon... I was in the, uh, in the bathroom taking a shave, and I heard a, a screeching, saw that between a screech and a whistle. Help! I said, what in the world is this? And I heard, <laughs> <"Boom!"> <laughs> he was taking a shave. Shave. That's important. He was taking a shave. In the bathroom taking a shave, and I heard a, a screeching, <laughs> saw that between a screech and a whistle. Help! I said, what in the world is this? <laughs> and I heard a boom. Then my whole house shook. White says he didn't realize it was a plane at the time, so he didn't call anybody. <laughs> <laughs> boom. I don't know what it was, so I'm not going to call anybody. <laughs> I- <laughs> Don't know what it is. Not going to call 911. Not going to ask the neighbor. Just going to assume it's the aliens. (laughs) I've been waiting all morning to play that clip for you guys. That's just, oh my gosh. It's just so fantastic. And I heard a boom. <laughs> God bless him. God bless him. I love people from the low country. God bless them. All right. We got to move on. <laughs> wow. I got to move on to the Eden Pure 360. It is an air. It is a heater. It's a cooler. It's a fan. It works. It's quiet. It moves the air up to 33 feet. It can move the air, can heat up or cool down a thousand square feet. I've used it on my front porch on football nights in the in the evening when it's cool out and it works and it doesn't it's not distracting because it is very quiet. And now it's available for purchase. If you want to get one, $25 off the lowest price, you go to EdenPureDeals.com and you put in the code Eric360 on the front page of the site, E-R-I-C-K 360. 
you can get the Eden Beer 360. It's a heater, it's a cooler, it's electric, uh, and it doesn't have bulbs you have to replace. It uses, um, oh, I forget now what they call it, um, but it, it's it's copper cool coils that heat, so you don't have to replace any bulbs or anything. And it works. It really does work. It, it gets warm. It can cool down an area as well. If you just want a great fan, you can switch it between the two, which makes it genius. EdenPureDeals.com, the discount code ERIC360, E-R-I-C-K 360. Hello, welcome. It is Eric Erickson here across the United States. So Ron DeSantis, I'm I'm actually e- e- intrigued by his willingness to pivot on something like this. Uh, Ron DeSantis has gone to Texas. He's going to be on ABC tonight, and he is talking about his American energy policy. And what he's saying is that um, in his direct quote, they have circulated, we will choose Midland over Moscow, the Marcellus over the Mullahs, and the Bakken over Beijing. Good alliteration there. Uh, America first energy policy. Uh, drilling, he's in Midland, Texas, standing in front of an oil rig when he says that. You know what I say about that? <laughs> I'm sorry. I just <laughs> – that clip just – that's fantastic. Oh, wow, Mr. White, God bless you. And he was also wearing – so in that clip of the, the guy in South Carolina, he's also wearing a, like, weighted tactical vest. He's, like, working his yard in a weighted tactical vest. <laughs> All right. All right, I'll let it go. I'll let it go. But anyway, DeSantis on the ground in Texas happening right now saying we're going to choose Midland over Moscow, uh, the Bakken over Beijing, the Marcellus over the Mullahs, an American first energy policy. Uh, okay, I want to take a phone call here, 877-973-7425, Dr. Lewis, no less. Welcome to the show, sir. How are you? <laughs> Greetings, Eric. How are you doing? Great. Hey, I appreciate you for taking my call, and uh, you and I have spoken a few times, and I will say this. You always do help me think, so I will make sure that I, I say that first. Um, the thing that I wanted to uh, talk about, I was listening to the last segment, and, uh, you know, we're talking about, like, democracy, right? And uh, one of the things that I've talked about with my students for uh, 13, 14 years now um, uh, is we look at, like, hierarchy of needs, Abraham Maslow. And, you know, what's so really interesting is that nobody ever mentions politics as a need, right? Right. However, however, when you talk to people individually, it becomes very divisive. Right. It's very divided and people it, it charges emotions and all these different things. And it's, it's so it's, it's a very interesting sort of like phenomena. And so the thing that I guess that uh, that I want to ask you, because, again, you do help me think, is when we are thinking about democracy and when we're thinking about um, party lines and we're thinking about all these different things, um, how do we get to a place to where um, it gets to a thing of respecting. Right. But they're also getting to a thing of really just loving the American ideal, the American concept, all of that stuff to where it's not so much anger and like just divided sort of thing. That's really kind of what I'm trying to understand. And I, I feel like you uh, can help me understand. OK. That. All right. Um, is This is a good question. And I appreciate it. And let, let me say that I actually believe that both sides, with some exceptions, both sides actually believe they love the country and they love the American ideal. And the, the problem is that they love the country and they love the ideal. They just happen to hate their neighbor. Um, yeah. And that's yeah. the problem is we've become more and more in the country isolated and in bubbles. And it is very hard these days for people who are aggressively inside politics to understand and appreciate people on the other side. Now, there, there, look, there are exceptions to the rules, like, for example, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has been openly critical of the United States and its founding yeah. ideals and all that. There are people right. on the right who have been flirting with Hungary and China that American society is too decadent. They don't like it. But but that, that's at the fringes of, of, of partisanship. Overwhelmingly, Republicans and Democrats love the country. They all wave the American flag. They all celebrate the 4th of July. They all participate in the electoral process. The problem is, increasingly, they just don't like each other. And you increasingly can't have democratic ideals – when both sides, they don't just disagree anymore. They actually profoundly hate each other. Um, our founders, I think, were smart in not having direct democracy. We, we've got Republican institutions within our democracy. So the democratic right. aspect of our society is you and I, we go vote. 
for representatives in a representative democracy. And then the Senate, as originally structured, represented the states and the state legislatures and governors picked the senators. The Supreme Court is not a democratic institution, but it certainly preserves the democratic institutions as a Republican institution. So how do we get people to reconnect to the fundamental ideas of the importance of our democracy? I I think it's got to start at a local level where we've got to get Republicans and Democrats, progressives and conservatives to actually get to know each other and find some non-political common ground. Um, I agree with that. And if I may interrupt, yeah. and I, I agree, with, everything you just said was absolutely beautiful. And, and yes, I agree with you. The only issue that I would say um, with the local level, a lot of times the local levels are divided. Right. And what I mean by that is in neighborhoods, in communities, in, you know, in population, the way that those local communities are the, um, are drawn up or whatnot or where people live. Yeah. You still have those pieces to where you have sort of like a, a, a singular way of looking at the world in those local communities. Right. Yeah. And so it's still it's still going to be pitted against. Well, oh, yeah, you, 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 if, you if live I, over I, in Decatur, I, Georgia. You're going to have be surrounded by liberals. Yeah. Right. 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 Oh, 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 you said liberals in Georgia. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. You think so? I, there. I, don't know. I, think, I, think, I think Georgia has a good mix. You think you think, really? Okay. Yeah. No, no, no. no. Okay. I, I, look, I, what, what I'm I, what I'm saying is, yeah, Georgia's got a great mix of people. But you go live you, you go over to downtown Decatur and you're not going to find a lot oh, of conservatives. You, you go yeah. up to Alpharetta. You're not going to find a lot of liberals um, yeah. just picking right. locations in Georgia. So getting those local right. communities uh, to build bridges now. And I got to I So there's. There's another aspect of this, and it's the one I hesitate to say because it's the one that I hope doesn't happen. But also, through tragedy, neighbors come together. Uh, And and you don't wish tragedy on people, but that tends to be where people's best selves come out. So you don't want it. But uh, external events, natural disasters, uh, terrorism, uh, that brings people together. And, And unfortunately, we need to find a positive thing that brings people together and, and no one's even looking. And part of it too, and, and I got to let you go there. I appreciate the conversation, but part of it too, we have to understand is that our politicians at this point in American history find it way easier to divide us than to unite us because both sides make a persuasive us versus them case. So the left says the Republicans are a threat to democracy. The right says Democrats are evil. They're castrating our kids. And both sides try to find a persuasive message to the middle to scare them about the other side. And it's harder to do in the past when people were more integrated into societies that were politically diverse. And now our societies are are increasingly siloed, particularly on the left. It is still to this day, although less and less so, but still, it's more likely for a conservative to know progressives than it is for progressives to know conservatives. And if you you don't want to believe that it is true and the data shows it, but let's just back up and look at the talking heads on television talking about the economy. If you watch MSNBC or much of CNN, No one can understand why the public isn't happy with Joe Biden's economy because it's good for them. But these are also either older people whose kids are out of the house or they're childless. And they're not buying milk. And they're not buying eggs. Milk is close to four bucks a gallon at my grocery store right now. Yesterday it was like three eighty five. I paid attention when I bought it. Had to buy two gallons of milk for my kids because they drink a lot of milk. Eggs were about three dollars for a dozen. Buy the really cheap ones. There's like two dollars and fifty cents. I, I I do buy a little better than just the standard generic eggs, and I realize they're technically all the same. But I promise my pound cake is fluffier when I buy the the the, the fresher eggs that are a little more expensive. But it adds up. Your gas prices add up. And if you're living in a big city and you're progressive and you have great public transportation access or you're using a car service to go to the studio to be a talking head on TV, you don't know what the gas price is. You're not feeling it. But if you're in Salem, Oregon, or you're in Dubuque, you're in Tucson, Arizona, and you got to commute, 
you you know what the price is. You're, you're living in Alpharetta, Georgia, and you live in you work in downtown Atlanta, and your work has made you come back to the office, and you have to fill up with gas to drive and fight rush hour traffic. You, you know what the cost is, and that matters a ton. It it matters greatly to people, and everybody else needs to kind of like realize walking in people's shoes. These these sorts of things do matter. There is a cost and a consequence. Now, there is also a cost and a consequence for voting badly, and and you need to know this one. I'm not trying to pick fights with my listeners on this, but the Republicans last night lost control of the New Hampshire legislature. They, they've had control of it. Two Republicans lost in special elections. Those two Republicans were Trump-supported, self-described MAGA candidates. They both campaigned on the 2020 election was stolen. One of them claimed profits told him the election was stolen. Now, I don't care about your belief in whether the election was stolen or not. You need to listen to this. New Hampshire is the most secular state in the nation. Even Massachusetts now has more people going to church California per capita has more people going to church than go to church in New Hampshire. New Hampshire is the most secular state in the nation. And when you're running a candidate who says the prophets, not Jesus, not God, but the prophets told him the election in 2020 was stolen, and that's your chief campaign argument that the election in 2020 was stolen— Do you know what the voters are likely to do when they hear that? That's what they're likely to do. And then they're going to run the other way and they're going to vote Democrat. That's just the reality of the situation, folks. MAGA candidates can sell in parts of the country, but in New Hampshire they can't. And if the Republicans can't recognize that there are places in this country that work for MAGA candidates and places that don't, and you got to find a presidential level, a candidate who can bridge those gaps, you're not going to win. You can vote for people who agree with you 100% of the time. That's fine, but you're also going to be a loser, and you're not going to be able to advance. You think the nation's in decline. You want to stop the decline, and and you're going for, well, this guy must agree with me in all cases, and that guy's not going to win in New Hampshire. Republicans just lost control of the legislature because the MAGA side of the GOP decided it's got to be our guy or else, and the general election voters said, or else, we'll go or else. We're going to have to figure this out or Joe Biden is going to get reelected and the Democrats are going to keep the Senate too. <sighs> okay, we can move on now. Got that off my chest. So I need to tell you about stamps.com. Stamps.com can save you money. All right, all right, it, it, let, let me just forget the script here. Let me just tell you. I've been a longtime stamps.com subscriber. There's no contract. There's no fees. There's no long-term commitment. I can use it or not. I put money in my account. And I can save a lot of money on both UPS and post office rates. Not only that, I don't have to stand in line. I can schedule pickups. So I've been sending out to affiliates and others these nice little um, Yeti tumblers with my show logo and some golf balls that have the logo on it and little QR code. You you scan it and it it fires up the live stream of the show. It's a a little thing. As we bring stations online, sending these things out, just started getting them in. And I got a little printer. I go to my stamps.com account. I print it out. I know how much it weighs because I got the digital scale, and I can print it out, and then I can schedule a pickup, and I don't have to stand in line. It saves me money. With holidays coming up, if you're doing a lot of shipping for family or friends or for your small business, Stamps.com, it saves you money. All you do, go to Stamps.com. You click on the microphone. You put in my name, Eric, E-R-I-C-K. You can sign up. There is no long-term commitment. There is no contract. They'll send you the free digital scale. You'll get some free postage. You can save some money. You don't have to stand in line to do your shipping. It is so much easier to use stamps.com than to stand in line at the local post office or the local UPS store. It saves you money. You get you get great discounts. I love it. You will love it. Stamps.com. You click on the microphone and you put in my name, Eric, E-R-I-C-K. You save fantastic money. You don't stand in line. You get your packages shipped. You get that free digital scale. 877-973-7425. That's the number. When we come back, we've got to move on to other topics, including... 
They're coming for George Washington now. They said they wouldn't come for George Washington. And now in New York, they're coming for George Washington. This other program brought to you by First Liberty Building and Loan. Wherever you are in the United States, they can help your business grow. If you're buying a building, building a building, buying a franchise, you need $250,000 or more, reach out to them. FirstLibertyGA.com is their website, FirstLibertyGA.com. Spend 10 minutes with them. You can get their contact info on the website. See if they're a fit for you, you for them. Tell them I sent you, FirstLibertyGA.com. I, so I, I, gotta, I wasn't going to talk about this, and, and I got to talk about this. My kids' school like every year does a service project, and they go into a the inner city in a not great neighborhood where oftentimes they find, find uh, bullet casings and, and things like that, and, and they do service projects. They're painting houses for poor people in a neighborhood today, and my daughter sent me this picture. It is a... Ziploc bag. It has wood pellets for a pellet grill weighing it down. And inside is this flyer. The Holocaust is a lie. Six million Jews did not even live in Germany occupied territory during World War II. According to the on-site research by Jewish journalist David Cole, the alleged gas chambers had wooden doors many of which locked from inside, as well as heavy imprints on the walls where showers once stood and were later demolished. It, it just it goes on and on and on. It used to be that anti-Semitism and the Holocaust denial was a product of fringe right-wing white supremacists, and it is increasingly a thing in black neighborhoods uh, where you have certain members of the Islamic community trying to draw them into mosques, and you, you've got a lot of you, you've got a lot of the black community being targeted by Holocaust deniers and anti-Semites, and trying to blame Jews for the problems of the black community. And so here are my kids in this neighborhood in Middle Georgia. And someone has thrown out Holocaust denial paraphernalia with pellets for a wood uh, for a uh, smoker in the bag to weigh them down so that they can easily throw them out. It should be deeply disturbing to everyone this happening. I put the screenshot up and had several people reply that in the inner cities where they live in black communities, this is happening as well. No one seems to ever see the people who are throwing these things out. But they're being thrown out, uh, trying to indoctrinate people into a new generation of Holocaust. You forget it. You repeat it. This should bother people. And I think it should bother them more than it probably does bother a lot of people who kind of roll their eyes at it and say it's not convincing. But it's convincing people. This level of anti-Semitism out there it, on the right and the left, you know— it, I, I, political ideology tends to be a full circle, and the crazy sides meet. You have David Duke, the Klansman, and Cynthia McKinney, the black former congresswoman, now doing events together about Holocaust denial and and Jewish infiltration of America. It's, it's just craziness. It's real craziness. It should be a real concern to people that this is happening, and, and God bless my kids for now walking through this neighborhood and finding these things and throwing them away. Um, absolutely ridiculous. All right. We, we got more to talk about. Um, I'll take your phone calls, 877-973-7425. However, when we come back, I do really, really want to spend time on the data about black and Hispanic Americans. The Washington Post is ringing alarm bells for Democrats. You have a problem. Black commentators are flooding into the White House and the DNC saying you have a problem. And the problem is one the Democrats can't address because they are controlled not by the Jews. They're controlled by white women. Step into the world of power, loyalty, and luck. I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. With family, cannolis, and spins mean everything. Now, you want to get mixed up in the family business. Introducing The Godfather at ChompaCasino.com. 
Test your luck in the shadowy world of the Godfather slot. Someday, I will call upon you to do a service for me. Play the Godfather, now at chumpacasino.com. Welcome to the family. VGW Group, no purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. See terms and conditions, 18 plus.